Now, okay, it's going live again. Okay. So I'm just gonna have to uh, turn my. Yay! You can't turn your phone while recording. Oh, it's gotta go long. Carol Krugman's, Pam's watching. Okay, can you hear me? Okay, <clears throat> is Mackenzie still watching? Uh, no. Pam, we have Pam here, Alice is here. Okay. Okay, now. Okay, let's see. All right, at the bottom next to like the comments and stuff, see if there's like an add button. Okay, live video, mystery mask. Um, Yeah. Um, can you invite me somehow? Okay, guest requests. Okay, now how do I do that? Uh, search for me. Uh, don't see you. And there's no other way uh, to do it. Um, are you watching? Yeah, I'm watching. <sighs> Your viewers. We got Pam Bornhoff. We got a few. We got Alice. Okay, I got Alice, Susan, Pam, Carol. Okay. Oh, you know what? There. Now, can you see me watching? No. <sighs> Diane's on. So let's see, there's comment, there's, all I see is guest request, your viewers, and that's it. Is there a search above one of those? No. Because I, I mean, there, we've got eight people viewing, and I'm only seeing four. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know if you can't invite. I'm on here, though. 
No, I keep losing viewers. Yeah. All right. I'm just going to... I think you're just going to have to go... I'm really sorry, but you're going to have to go with it alone. I no worries. I don't know how to join you now. Alice popped up there again. Okay, I'll keep an eye on the viewers there. Okay, so I don't need the lava later then. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. I mean, you know, you can hear. You want to just stay connected on the on Teams here? Yeah, and I can kind of talk you through. I can give you uh, comments and stuff. Yep, they can hear you just fine. So I'm also going live with my computer. Does that show up too? Uh, no. I think let's just. Okay. Yep, Carol said she can hear both of us, so let's roll with it. Okay. <laughs> All right, let's do the intro so I can talk a little bit while you get ready. All right, <clears throat> sounds good, sounds good, sounds good. All right, All right. Well, it's like we're harkening back to the old days uh, where we're complete amateurs with this. Yeah, right? Okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, there's always something new to learn, and here in Rogue Kitchen, we learn by playing with our food and experimenting with technical difficulties. It's Rogue Kitchen Live. Hey everybody, thanks again for joining us this afternoon. So sorry we've had some technical difficulties. We're just experiencing and just kind of figuring out a bunch of different stuff here as we go through these things. Um, you know, as we try to make more videos and try to do more live things, um, seems like we're just running into some issues. So anyway, we're trying to get past that, um, but again, Kind of learn sometimes by failing, right? And sometimes in cooking, that's what you do too. But today, I got a couple of no-fail recipes that we're going to share with you. Uh, Jimmy actually has a great uh, pecan pie cup recipe. We'll go ahead and just post that up anyway, even if we don't get to it. Um, but, uh, it, I mean, it's a great little thing. I, rather than just having a pecan pie, that's my favorite pie. Jimmy, I don't know about you, but uh, it's definitely one of mine favorites. Um, my mom makes me one almost every year for one of the holidays. Probably not this year, but that's okay. Um, <clears throat> but then uh, another recipe we have is a really fresh cranberry relish. Um, we're going to use the grinder on a mix um, on a KitchenAid mixer um, to, to show you how to do that. And if you don't have a grinder or a KitchenAid mixer, that's okay. We have some solutions for you, maybe some other kitchen tools uh, that you can use for that. It's very, very simple, very fresh. You don't have to let it cook. Um, and it's something you can, you can make the day before Thanksgiving or the day before you use it or up to one week prior to. You know, one of the things about Thanksgiving is we spend hours, you know, like one or two days prior to Thanksgiving just prepping a bunch of stuff. Well, these recipes I'm gonna show you today uh, you can make them up to one week in advance. One of them you can actually freeze, and that is going to be the caramelized onion gravy. Now, unfortunately, I don't have all my onions peeled and cut, so we're going to have to kind of go through that. Um, but uh, you know what? Jimmy and I will banter back and forth, as we usually do, um, while, while I'm cutting those onions. Um, and I'll kind of talk you through why we're going to, you know, why I like this recipe so much, um, where I got the recipe um, and why I'm going through the process that I'm going through to do it. All right, so with that, um, oh, one quick note, we won't be on next week. 
I think we kind of need a break for a little bit. Uh, but of course, next week with, you know, Wednesday being the day before Thanksgiving, uh, we're going to go ahead and give it a break next week. But then the following week, what is that, Jimmy? December 2nd, uh, we're going to come back. Yep, we're going to do... Cool. We're going to have some Thanksgiving uh, leftovers. Uh, we're going to do some fun things. I think we're even going to try a Thanksgiving meal pierogi. Man, that sounds great. All right. Oh, uh, yeah. We were talking about that with uh, Alicia, weren't we? Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah, we were talking with, talking about that with a coworker of ours um, from MSU uh, a couple weeks ago. Uh, in fact, during our live or during our uh, rogue, uh, rogue conversations. Um, so we're going to try to. You know, rather, than, I mean, we all like to just heat up a big plate of Thanksgiving leftovers for a couple of days, uh, but we're going to try to get into some creative uses for those leftover products. Um, and then the following week, I think on December 9th, that'll be kind of our last, our last rogue kitchen for the year, for the calendar year. Um, but then also, I think the last one until we hit January, uh, sometime late January. So, um, but that week, um, I'm going to go through the process of cooking up a beef Wellington. Um, you know, I think a lot of times people might, you know, maybe, uh, it seems intimidating, right? But I'm going to go through and I've got one hour to make beef Wellington. So number one, it's a challenge. Uh, but number two, I think I can debunk the myth that it takes a long time to make beef Wellington and do it in under an hour, maybe not baking the entire thing. Um, but at least getting it wrapped, uh, you know, to the point of wrapped up in puff pastry. So we'll check that out, all right? Cool, Jimmy, we ready? Yeah, I think we're ready. Okay, so unfortunately with this kind of set up here, um, we're not gonna see a lot, of, a lot of my face, but I think that's okay. Um, so we'll just see a lot of uh, knife oh, work. Pretty face, oh, thanks, Jimmy, you're so kind. You're so, so kind. Um, so it'll be a lot of kind of bird's eye view down on the cutting board here um, and uh, the, the uh, mixer here, and I'll definitely, I'll be positioning the camera over here to um, our stove as well um, to kind of get that view, all right? Cool, well, let's get this started. It's 4.07, thanks y'all. There we go. All right, Jimmy, how's that view? Is that good? Just give me a heads up if views aren't good or anything. All right, give me one second for the stream to catch up. Yeah, Okay, all right, so. You know, the interesting thing about this, I'm, I was printing out this recipe today, Jimmy. A few years ago, I did, uh, I did this recipe at the Colorado Merch Mart for a uh, Colorado Christmas, or the, the Denver Merch Mart for a Colorado Christmas. Um, and uh, I had actually all my discussion talking points already attached to the documents. So I was like, hey, part of the work's already done. All right. Ready to go. Ready to go. You bet. So, yeah, I know. I love it when I come up with nice little surprises like that. So, okay, so we need about four cups of of sliced onions. All right, so we're gonna start with we're gonna try about five onions here and see if that gets us to where we need to be. All right. Um, so again, I'm kind of going. With this recipe, the onions are really what's gonna thicken the gravy. Um, That's exactly. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly right. You know, and the yeah the the yeah the bulk of the onions, uh, yeah, you're right. Thickens thickens the gravy, um, and it's one of those things too where you know, you know, like with a lot of things in in cooking, it's not really finite. Um, you know, so we we might have to adjust it a little bit. Um, you know, and what I mean by that is we might have to. Uh, Check your phone. I just uh, figured out how to request to join. Okay, how, how's that? Okay. Go to where you saw the uh, request and uh, all the people. Yep. Oh, okay, so now, oh, McKenzie was on there. It said add. There should be requests on there. Yeah, but again, I, I, don't, I don't see your name. No. Okay. All right. Well, never mind. <laughs> Man. 
It's not popping up. Okay, I'll keep that on just in case. I'll check, I'll check on it every now and again. Okay, um, so anyway, um, we might have to adjust the liquid here for this. Um, and so we can, we can definitely do that. So, um, you know, one of the, I think one of the, not secrets, but kind of one of the things to keep in mind when caramelizing onions um, is to, is to have your pan already nice and hot. Um, yeah. And the reason... I think we, we talk about this a lot. Yeah, you know what? I think that we, we do. We definitely mentioned having your pan hot um, prior to starting your food. And, you know, like with um, caramelizing onions, we want to do that. Uh, so that way the onions don't just sit there and sweat. And, um, oh, I love difficult onion peels. They're my favorite. Careful, watch those fingernails. Remember we were talking about that last time. I know, we got the in the um, the infectious onion peel. Oh, yeah, these are great. <laughs> so you know what? It, it, sometimes if that happens, I just peel off one little layer of, of, of uh, flesh and the skin at the same time. So that's, that's quite all right. But, um, you know, but starting your pan hot is definitely key to getting a good caramelization on your onion. And um, uh, we're gonna add butter to this. And the reason why we do butter is because, well, it tastes good. Um, but number two, because the butter has fats in it that will uh, help with that, uh, with that caramelization process. And uh, so, you know, it provides us, yeah. you know, kind of two. Like when you do a brown butter, you know, like yeah. the, the parts in there that are caramelized and then burning and giving that nutty flavor. Yeah, the nice the, uh, caramelization process here. Yeah, and that would be the milk solids of the butter there that would that are that are browning and giving that wonderful caramelized flavor and color as well. But with a hot pan, you don't want to put the butter in first thing. You want to put the onions in first thing, put your butter on top, and then kind of let that let the butter melt down in, and then stir up your onions. Uh, because if you put your butter straight into a, a screaming hot pan, what happens is it turns to a beurre noir, or, and uh, that means a, a, a beurre noir, that means a black butter. We don't want a black butter. Black butter tastes like bad fish. And, um, well to me it does anyway. And so, definitely don't want that. Okay, so a while ago we were talking about slicing an onion for something, and we talked about how, you know, if we cut straight down like this, right, we get these big, like, thumbnail pieces, right? We get these big chunks like this, and as we slice the rest of our onion, right, we get these nice, nice little rainbows, right? Well, in some applications we want all of this. Oh, we want all of the rainbows. We don't, we don't want any of the big thumbnail pieces here. Well, yeah. today, it doesn't really matter because we're going to be pureeing this entire, this, you know, all, all of these products. And so, you know, just that, that doesn't matter, right? But um, again, yeah, keeping... So you, you don't need your best knife skills for this one, right? Yeah, you, I mean, you, you do kind of want them uh, fairly, uh, or you, you want them cut fairly consistent. Um, just so you get an even caramelization on there. Um, uh, and I, I personally, I think that little rainbow cuts like this caramelize better than like large chunks. Um, they tend to, they tend to sit in the pan and sit on, you know, and, and uh, cook uh, better than like big chunks. So, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, turn on my burner back here about medium high heat, okay? And so I'm just going to go ahead and slice all these guys up. All right. So here we're looking like, you know, that's about the consistency that, that I would want to do for caramelized onions. Something like that. Like that thickness there. That's a nice, nice little thickness there. Okay. So now we're just going to go ahead and just blaze through all these. All right. So this takes me back to my apprentice days, Jimmy, when I used to cut potatoes like this. Oh yeah, 
I don't know how many times I lost the skin on the tops of my knuckles here. But uh, that never went in the food, don't worry, we threw that part away. <laughs> Ew! You thought you did. Okay, one more start real quick. I think I figured out how to log in. Okay, let me cut this one onion here and let's try it. Alright, what do we got? Oh, something else. Something popped up here. Yeah, that's me. Oh, uh, hey, there it is. Jane. Oh, yeah. Approve. I am adding you. Connecting. There you there are. There we go. Hey, I'm going to switch. Uh, I'm going to hang up on Skype over here. Sounds good. I am going to. Yep. And I'll see you here. Awesome. Hey, look at that. All right. Hey. So now, let me turn on my volume all the way here. There we go. Hear you loud and clear. Hope you all can hear me loud and clear. And so I'm just going to go ahead and so just cut through all of these. Now, I'm gonna, as soon as I get these cut and uh, started on the heat here, I'm gonna have to run out to my garden really quick and clip a couple pieces of time. All right, Jason. I think you're. Uh, why don't you close your computer over there? Yeah, it's closed. Uh oh. Jimmy, what happened? All right. Well, Jimmy, if you can hear me, the um. The computer is closed. So it says adding Jimmy here. Uh oh, what happened to Jimmy? Prove. Hey, I'm back. There he is. All right, I think we're I think we're all good okay. now. All right, cool. Okay. All right, so my computer's closed. All right, there we go. Okay. So as you can see here, I'm really watching my fingers. Oh, man, that's I, I don't like when I cut myself. Oh, that. What's the worst is when you just shave off just the tiniest little bit. You don't even notice. And then it really, then it just like oh, okay. burns when you get onion on it or uh, lemon juice or. Well, it's just, it's just like having a paper cut, you know? It, it's just it's so annoying. Yeah. Having a sharp knife definitely helps with this. Um, and I know somebody might ask, how do you prevent yourself from crying and cutting onions? You do it really fast. Yeah. <laughs> but, all right, so this looks about like four cups, I think. Probably even a little more. That's all right. I think we're good though. Jimmy, you still with us? Uh-oh, lost him again. Okay. Might have to go back here and approve it again. I don't know what. Uh. <laughs> Who knows? Okay, well, we'll keep... I'm back though. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll right. see if this works out. I'm just gonna close everything down. All right, you you okay, just keep you just keep crack, well, rocking. All right, sounds good. So I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh, Position this guy. I'll see if I can't switch on over here. There we go. Oh, that's going to pull. Um, oh, my mixer's plugged in. That's why. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Here we go. Okay. So we've got our. Our pot has been sitting on the heat, you know, while I've been cutting those onions there. So again, I'm going to go straight in with the onions and you'll hear, you hear kind of a squeaking sound. That's actually really good for mushrooms. Uh, you want that nice squeaking sound for mushrooms, but that's how we know our pan is hot. We've got a nice sizzle, kind of have a, a squeaking sound as well. So we'll break all those guys up. Okay. All right, now I'm going to take some butter here, about, I'm going to take about three tablespoons of butter. 
Okay. And I'm gonna I'll throw that butter straight in. Okay, so and with the butter I like to uh, I like to cut it up into into pieces like so and kind of spread them out here throughout the uh, onion here. So looks like you need Jimmy back here. Okay, so we've got we've got that really loud kind of roaring sear going on there with our onions, and that's really what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, see if I can't get Mr. Webb back here. I'm adding him in. There he is. <laughs> okay. We'll see. Now we'll go ahead and we'll stir all this in. All right, you can kind of see on the bottom there, we're actually starting to get some browning going on down there. Yeah, I, I heard you talking about the squeaky sound as you dropped them in, right? Yeah. Yeah, that means your pan's yeah. nice and hot. Nice and hot, you bet. You can see they're starting to wilt nicely now. All right, now I'm going to kick the heat up on high. We kind of lost that roaring. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah, the, the goal here is just to keep that heat high. And, like, as some yeah. of the liquid drips down, you want to let that liquid get some of the fawn from the onions. Um, and the, yeah. the fawn is, like, that caramelization that sticks to the pan. And as the onions Ooh. start to sweat, it'll kind of bring that up and then mix it up with the onions, right? Yeah, that's exactly right. Yep, yep. Absolutely. So, all right. <clears throat> So these will probably these will probably take a good thirty minutes to um, to uh, caramelize here, but that's okay. We have plenty of stuff I think we can talk about with this. But yeah, so I learned uh, this particular recipe um, came from where a lot of my recipes come from, and where a lot of my kind of my cooking style, if you will, came from uh, came from a, uh, a restaurant I worked at in North Carolina. Um, and uh, that was the Carrington House, right? Uh, no, this is actually the Cosmopolitan Grill. Oh, okay. There's All a right. gentleman. There's a gentleman that shows up every now and again on our on the on these live feeds. Randy Wilder. Um, he was the chef oh, de yeah. cuisine yeah. of that restaurant. Of yeah, he he was the chef de cuisine of that restaurant that I worked at, and so. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, we've had Randy on here a few times. Yeah, so he's the one who uh, he he's the one that I worked with, but then. Um, our boss, John Toller, is the one who taught me this recipe. But um, so, uh, so, Jimmy, what do you what do you have working on over there? All right, yeah. So while you're getting that going, um, I, I'm going to get started on my pecan pie muffin type things, or little uh, pockets, if you will, cups. Um, cups, yeah. So recipe: uh, eggs, dulce de leche. Oh, and. We'll post a, a link, but I, I have our website started and we'll start getting all of our recipes on there. So every single recipe that we've done on here, every single video will all be on one website um, and we'll start linking that there too. But so recipe, I've got eggs, dulce de leche. And so I actually forgot to do my dulce de leche last night. Um, it's something that you do, but I'll show you how to start it today. Um, so you can actually take the, the whole can and throw it in an instant pot and cook it for 15 minutes, but then you have to let it set overnight so that way you don't have the pressure buildup um, in the can. Because if you were to go to, if you were to put it in the pressure cooker for 15 minutes and then decompress it and then go to crack it open, it'll spew all over the place and it's like liquid napalm. Um, Jason knows this from working in kitchens. Caramel, like is burnt sugar or caramelized sugar or melted sugar. Once it, oh, yeah. once it hits your skin, it just sticks and there's no getting it off. You just got to get it straight under cold water. Ah, but to mitigate yeah. that, you just put it in the Instant Pot. We'll go, we'll get that out later. Um, you cook it for 15 minutes and then you just let it depressure. You unplug it and then the next day you have a can of the perfect Dolce de Leche. So that's ingredient number two. And since I didn't have any, I had to harken back to my old days working in the 
pantry um, over at uh, Chimney Park Bistro and had to make some caramel. So I still got it in me. Still can make a nice good caramel sauce or basically a dulce de leche. Um, I just caramelized some sugar, Yum. some heavy cream um, and hit it in there. Um, you, I might finish off with a little bit of butter. I know Carol will like that one. Uh, but that's ingredient number two. Uh, then we got the brown sugar, corn syrup and everything. And so it's basically like a pecan pie. Uh, but we're gonna take this filling, we're gonna put it in little cups in the muffin tin. We're gonna use some puff pastry and make those little cups and and then finish it off with a little bit extra the dulce de leche. So I'm gonna get started on that. I've kind of got it going. Um, Jason, right. do you wanna keep going or I can show the yeah absolutely show the I mix on this. Definitely keep going, so. So, you know, last week, was it, yeah, or no, two weeks ago, we were, we were talking about kind of our, you know, some of our favorite ho um, holiday dishes. Um, and so, you know, I'm, the same people are watching, or we, we got some different viewers out there. What do we, you know, maybe put in the, put in the chat or the comments there, um, kind of what's your favorite um, holiday dishes are, and kind of maybe have some traditions. You know, this, this year's Thanksgiving is probably going to be a, maybe a little bit different, you know, with uh, all the restrictions and whatnot, but, um, you know, we don't get to indulge in the family raviolis this year. That's one of my, that's kind of one of my traditional dishes that our, some of our family get togethers is, um, is, uh, is raviolis. One that my wife really, really likes, and she, she actually loves making it. And it's, it's a pretty intense recipe, but it's a uh, it's a cornbread and sausage green apple stuffing. Uh, oh, nice! It's from the silver, yeah, it's actually from the Silver Palette cookbook, but um, it's uh, it's it's a good one, and it's one that always always ends up on our table there. But, yeah, um, but you know what? So, I was talking uh, on a call with some of our friends and. Um, one of our friends makes a ton of desserts for Thanksgiving. She's like, but I won't have anybody to do it for. I was like, well, you know what? Just make it. It's, it's the holidays. Enjoy it yourself. Yeah. Indulge, overindulge. Just, uh, but That's have it. fun. Do it. it makes you happy right now. Yeah. You know, and like I said, I mean, you can always do, uh, like stuffing cakes, you know, little pan fried stuffing cakes or mix that with some, some of your mashed potatoes, maybe an egg or something like that. And you can make little breakfast mashed potato stuffing cakes, you know? And, yeah, and so um, like similar, like with these uh, pecan pies that we're about to do. Um, yeah. You know, you don't, you can make it into smaller bits, like smaller portions, and then you can freeze the rest. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, these, uh, these cups will actually hold pretty well. And um, Yeah, I think we had a bunch extra we, last year when we did the uh, Let's did. Talk I Turkey. We did, yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah, that was great. All right. Oh, speaking of turkey, time. Jimmy. Oh, yeah. Turkey? Turkey, yeah. Let's talk turkey. Um, let's talk turkey. Hey, that was our class last year. Um, ladies and gentlemen, Jimmy Webb is uh, is quite creative with his turkey. <laughs> oh, yeah. You um, want to go there? <laughs> you've heard us talk several times about a sous vide cooker and um, you know, just kind of, the, kind of the crazy things we'll do with food sometimes, but... Uh, I know Jimmy has talked several times about taking the skin off of a turkey, brining it, and then putting it in sous vide, wrapping it back up. So, um, hey, you know but, what? Uh, um, this year I ordered two turkeys from Corner Post uh, because. Did you really? Oh man! When we did the pre-order, we weren't anywhere near the uh, restrictions we're at right now, so we, yeah. we were gonna have a few friends over and do a friendsgiving, but we did have to cancel that. Um, yeah. And so now I've, I'm sitting on an extra turkey. So maybe I will Ooh. do a few different ways of doing turkey. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, I could, we could potentially even just do a couple next week. Maybe a little, maybe a little more casual coming. like this. Yeah, or, you know, um, maybe do something like that. Or uh, maybe how to break down a turkey. Um, but then, you know, we'll, man, then we'll have some... We'll have some product left over, and then we can do our leftover. Oh yeah, there we go. 
leftover stuff, you know. But yeah, so what Jason was um, talking see, about think, with the uh, with the sous vide turkey that I've done, um, yeah. What I do is I actually butcher the whole thing down. I pull the, all the the breasts, the two breast lobes out, um, and then yeah. I'll save that. I'll take the lobes. I'll here. Let me. You guys are just staring at my bowl. Um, I'll take the two uh, breasts out, and then take the lobes, and then flip them, kind of pound them out, cut them, uh, score it. Uh, pack it full of uh, garlic herb butter and then lay them across on each other and then truss Ooh. that together and then yeah. I'll uh, just do kind of a, a wet bag brine essentially because I'll uh, salt it and season it and then put it in a uh, sous vide bag or a vacuum sealer and then oh, nice. let that sit overnight and then on the day of I'll sous vide that and like like you're saying I take the skin and I save the skin um, and then yeah. I sous vide that and then I wrap it in the skin and then fry it in the cast iron skillet. <laughs> and so oh, man. It, it's a little bit excessive, uh, but that's the white meat piece. And then the dark meat, I take the quarters, the leg and the, <laughs> the leg. <laughs> that's half the turkey. <laughs> so the other, I take the, uh, the quarter, uh, the, the hind quarter, the, uh, the thigh and the leg, and then I'll actually do a dry cure on those um, and do almost like a, a, a duck comb feet. So I'll do a dry cure. Let them uh, dry out in the fridge uh, for about a day or two um, with some salt yeah. on there. And then I'll brush all that off. Um, and then I put that in a sous vide bag, too, with a bunch of butter. And then I do that sous vide overnight at, like, 150, 140 um, okay. overnight. And so it turns out like a turkey confit. Um, and then I'll take that and then just throw it under the uh, broiler the day of um, and get it nice and crispy Ooh. on the outside. Uh, but it's... Nice, salty, a little bit of sweet, a little crunchy. It, yeah, it's good. That does sound good, man. It sounds great. Um, you know, one of the I always think about, you know, things that I've done with turkeys in the past, and I'm not, I can't see the list of people here, but um, my aunt Diane is on. She'll remember. Maybe she'll remember. I don't know. My first Thanksgiving in my apprenticeship, I was living with her. And um, I wanted. I, I learned. I learned the skill of balantines and galantines. Yep. And um, I made a turkey leg balantine, and it didn't nice. turn out so well. <laughs> no. Oh man. But man, cleaning a turkey leg, cleaning all that meat off the tendons. And oh yeah. Getting all that sinew out of there. Oh gosh, that is so much work. So much work. But, um, All right, so for those of you watching uh, me mix up over here, um, so I've got the dulce de leche, the brown sugar, the corn syrup, the melted butter, and the salt. And so it's always important to put salt in, you know, with your sweets because it's you got to have that balance. You got to have the fat, the, the sweet, the acid, and it just kind of brings out the, the caramelization flavors of that dulce. Yeah, definitely. All right, so we've got some caramelization going on here in the bottom of the pan. We're going to let it go for a few more minutes here. Then I'm going to, well, then we'll, we will be glazed with some chicken stock, okay? Um, one of the reasons why we deglaze the chicken stock is you can use really any, any type of liquid. Um, but again, you know, if you use like a like um, an alcohol of some sort, like a sherry or um, uh, maybe like a brandy or even like a red wine, all right, you're imparting more flavor into the gravy, which, hey, there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but I'm just going to use uh, chicken stock because, um, again, I want, so I just want that pure caramelized onion flavor in there. But what happens is when we add a little bit of moisture into there, all right, we've got such a hot surface in there, we add that hot moisture. It, it kind of it pulls all that caramelized um, that that fond as Jimmy mentioned earlier. It pulls that off the pan, and then that gets stirred into the onions, and that's what kind of it, that that'll really help deepen that caramelized flavor and that caramelized color in there. So um, we will uh, add some of that in there. Now, as of right now, ladies and gentlemen, what's happening is you know these onions, it, you know they filled up this pan almost halfway. Right, and so now they've really cooked down. A lot of that moisture has had a chance to cook out. 
right? So now we were now we are just cooking and caramelizing just uh, kind of the meat of the onion, if you will, okay? Um, and that's really going to, again, that's going to lend us uh, more caramelization on there. And these will really start taking off now, now that we've evaporated that moisture out. So again, if you started your pan cold and then added the onions in and then turn on your heat, all right, well, uh, those onions in that pan, it has to over, that, that heat has to overcome all of that. All right, so it's just going to take much longer for your for your onions to caramelize. So that's why we started again with a hot pan. So that way we get that heat going right away. Okay, our pan is nice and hot, and now we have this nice hot pan going through our cooking process. Okay, um, you know uh, I'm going to add a little bit of stock here, and again it's just a little bit, like you know literally maybe two or three, maybe four tablespoons worth here so we don't want too much because if we if we overwhelm the pan with that stock then again we have to overcome that stock we have to evaporate that liquid uh, and we don't get the nice caramelized the, the nice caramelization going on in there so we just we add a little bits little bits of uh, liquid in there now if you've ever gone to a restaurant and they have French onion soup on their menu, you think, wow, how do they get those onions so well caramelized? This is the exact same process, okay? It's just, um, with a French onion soup, that's where you might taste that background of a brandy uh, or a sherry, right? Um, Marsala is really too sweet for an application like that. So, um, you know, if you wanted to caramelize some onions and add uh, kind of another layer of flavor. You wanted to add some alcohol or something like that, a wine or a brandy. Uh, definitely, I would definitely stay away from Marsala. Uh, use sherry. It has that drier um, flavor to it. Um, and uh, even a vermouth or something, ver vermouth's pretty good with, uh, uh, with, with onions, but a dry vermouth, not a sweet vermouth. So uh, when you, you know, sweet vermouth's got all that, you know, the nice, wonderful sugars in there, but you know, if you if you keep deglazing with that vermouth uh, and keep cook, you know, continue to cook it down, you really concentrate those sugars, and it just gets really, really overbearingly sweet. So, you want to try to stay away from that and try to stick with the drier, uh, drier liquors, drier alcohol, um, if you wanted to go that, that, that way. Okay. So, all right. So we're almost there with that. Um, all right. Oh, I think I lost Jimmy again, so I'm going to try to get him back. Well, there he is. All right, we're adding him. Okay, well, while we're doing that, whew. connecting, there he is. Hey! <laughs> hey! Hey! Uh, I got to put it on Do Not Disturb. As soon as somebody tried to call me, um, it kicked me out. Oh, is that what happened? Yeah. <laughs> oh. All right. <laughs> hey, so where are you at? Yeah, I kind of wish. So, um, okay, so we're getting a nice caramelization on here. Um, we are probably about. I'm hoping about 10 minutes away here. From... Oh, yeah. It looks like you're getting some color in there. Um, you know, sometimes... Yeah, I'm going to have to... Uh... Oh, I see. You're doing the stock. Okay, cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I'm just... I was going to say, sometimes well, I'll cut I'm... the heat and let all that liquid come down and then crank the heat yeah. back up. Okay. Uh, but... Yeah, I've got a lot of caramelization on the side of my pan here. This is... One of the drawbacks I found with working with uh, with gas sometimes is you get that you get hot spots on the side of the of the pan, but yeah, I'll try to uh, get all that off there. But. Yeah, so you know what? That actually played played to my favor earlier today uh, because the yeah. um, the caramel when I was doing the caramel, you know, yeah. sometimes the sides of your pan gets cold and it starts to crystallize over there. I was actually able yeah. to get the flame just to come up right around the edges. And it, it kept oh, yeah. it from crystallizing, and it worked out quite well. All right, so I'm chopping up two cups of nuts. We're going to say a little overflow is good. 
But I'm going to chop these up and add it to that mixture you saw me making earlier. Okay. And my favorite chopping tool, my cleaver. Oh, yeah. Yeah. If anybody, if uh, Dan Hyman's ever watching, he's got stories about me and my cleaver. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, I'm going to uh, set up... Set up uh, all the mees for uh, all the all the mees and floss, everything in its place for the cranberry relish here. Oh yeah. I'm just off yeah. So we did a. I'm just off to the side. We did that fruity cranberry that. stuff for. Uh, I don't, everybody here probably didn't see it, but it's on uh, YouTube right now. But we did do a video for yeah. um, our students who picked up uh, their fall baskets uh, from the Road Runner Food Pantry. Um, and we did a, yeah. a fruity cranberry cocktail there that uh, came up pretty good. Uh, kind of based on this one, right? What's that? It's kind of based on the one that you're about to do, just uh, you know, with the canned ingredients instead of the fresh ingredients, right? Yeah, yeah. We use the canned ingredients, so canned cranberry sauce. Um, and each student got a can of fruit cocktail as well. Um, so we just combined the canned cranberry sauce. Um, the cocktail sauce uh, and some crushed pineapple and then grated uh, using a box grater, uh, a, a, uh, um, a Granny Smith apple. Um, nice. Yeah. And you introduced me to that last year and the Granny Smith apple with the cranberry is just perfect. Yeah. You know, and this, I mean, unfortunately this recipe does have quite a bit of sugar in it. The, the one that I'm doing today Um because, you know, but again, we're using fresh cranberries, and so you know we we have a lot of tartness there. Uh, then we're using a Granny Smith apple, so that's more tartness there. Um, you know, we're adding some crushed pineapple, and now we're sweetening it up a little bit. We're, again, we have some sourness going on. Then we're adding an orange to it, right? So yeah, sweeten it up a little bit more, but we just really need that granulated sugar in there to you know to really bring everything about then and and uh, really give it that nice that nice balance of sweet and tart um that you know that makes cranberry sauce so good yeah um all right so we've got a little way to go on that guy there that's okay though um so all right well i think while i'm gonna let this finish up here cool and i'm just gonna go ahead and uh talk through this um talk through this uh, cranberry sauce here. So let's go ahead and get started on that. All right, um, hey, while you're moving over, give me one second real quick. Uh, I'm yeah. going to, so we have, cause I gotta fill these and let me just walk through that real quick. So I have my puff pastry sure. you can see over here. Let me uh, tilt you up a little bit. Let me just show you one of them and then I'll let you do your cranberry sauce. Um, okay. So we're just gonna cut off little sections of these. I'm going to cut this into nine, so three that way, and then three this way, and I'll probably grab my other muffin tin to do the rest of these because we're going to have a lot of filling. Um, but I just wanted to show real quick. So if I were to just take this one piece and throw it in here and try to put the filling in there, it's going to puff up so thick, and it's going to just puff up and then push all that filling out, and then it's going to fall all over the place. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take uh, a little rolling pin. This is actually a metal stick, but I like to use it as a rolling pin. <laughs> and we're just gonna roll it out just a little bit. Um, that way we don't get as much growth on the, on the puff pastry. Um, and it kind of flattens it out a little bit. And, and it'll fill the cup a little bit better, right? So then we're gonna th toss this in here. Push that down, and actually before I do that, make sure we get some oil in. Make sure we don't stick too much. Drop that in there. And then get a spoon and get, we're just gonna spoon this filling into here, okay? You wanna make sure you're getting some of the egg and the caramel mixture. And then that's about as deep as you want to go. Uh, again, because the, the puff pastry is going to expand, and you don't want to push in too much up there. All right, cool. So if you want to start on the cranberry sauce, I will start working on these. All right, cool. So I'm just adding another 
another little splash of chicken stock back over here. So hopefully I don't forget about these. Sometimes I, I know what's going on behind me. I just <laughs> end up forgetting about it. You just got to listen for so, it. You always got to listen. Listen in the kitchen. Yeah, definitely. Here's something crackling some and popping. Yeah. Okay. So this particular um, cranberry relish all right, um, goes through a food grinder attached to my mix in a uh, KitchenAid mixer. Okay, uh, here I'm, I've got two different size dies. I have a, where are we at here? There we are. I've got a larger die here and I've got a smaller die here. All right, I'm going to use the smaller die here. All right, so we put our, our blade inside of here. Put that guy on there. Um, and, uh, I really love using this little grinder. It's pretty cool. Uh, yeah, I got to give me one of those. Although I think, uh, I think my wife would beg to differ. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I can unplug the, I don't know if you're like me, but your is your kitchen over equipped? Some would say, <laughs> uh, yeah, I kind of have to thin it out every once in a while. Yeah. Every, every <laughs> once in a while, one of my neighbors gets a, uh, KitchenAid mixer cause I got a new one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, all right, so this recipe consists of one bag of cranberries, one Granny Smith apple, all right, one orange, uh, one can of pineapple. I actually, believe it or not, I was only able to find tidbits today. Oh. Um, yeah, crushed pineapple is gone. Huh. Um, and then, uh, that's kind of the story of the last six yeah, months. Yeah. Anyway, um, finding products that aren't readily available. Well, everybody's shopping um, early. And then, of course, yeah. Uh, and then, of course, our uh, two cups of sugar as well. So, okay, first off, I'm going to, this, this is kind of a deviation from the recipe, uh, but you all know I like using the, uh, the, Jimmy and I like using our food planes here. So, I'm just going to, zest some of the orange peel off of off of here all right i'll take about half of the orange half of the zest off here and you see how fine i'm mean, it's still pretty yellow or still still pretty orange in there but i'm not getting down to the white part like i did right there okay we don't want that that gets bitter okay so we take it down about like so we'll go a couple more stripes here a couple more turns there we go and it's a beautiful smell uh, i love the smell of zest orange zest lime zest lemon zest oh yeah it's amazing um all right so we will kind of shove this to the side here i lost my knife here it is all right so we'll just kind of shove this off to the side all right and then we will end up mixing back into our relish later on I'm back on just stirring my onions here so i don't burn them here all right so those definitely have about five more minutes and we'll be good to go okay so now we want a granny smith apple all right now we want to leave the skin on all right and add, i mean it's going through a grinder the grinder will push through it no problem okay. it adds a nice color so, to it though like that little s splash of green yeah, absolutely. in it yep yeah, it sure does. And I'm just going to use an apple core here. So, oh, those are fun. You know what I want to try to do with this is the uh, a blooming onion. So <laughs> oh, blooming yeah. Onion with that. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if anybody saw this earlier, but this is one of my, like in the last year, one of my favorite kitchen purchases ever. Um, and it's just a tiny little butter melter. Like I bought it, bought it for melting butter for uh for popcorn, because we make popcorn in, a, in the pan. And it's so much better to just put this on the stove than to microwave it and have butter pop and go everywhere. So definitely, I think it was a $15 purchase on Amazon. One of my favorite things ever. Sweet. All right, so now, now what we want to do is we want to, uh, I need my knife again. We want to peel, we want to take that, that that orange peel off of there. Obviously, we don't want to shove the orange peel through the grinder there. Yeah, you get so, a little bitter there. Yeah. 
So, this is one of these uh, kitchen techniques. Hold on real quick. I'm, oh, yeah. Oh, this is going to be so nice. Okay. So, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this peel off and just have the orange meat left over. Okay. So, what we want to do is we want to cut off an end here and cut off an end here and then take our, our orange peel off into in, um, in segments. All right. So, here, here's how we do that. So we make our first cut, we cut the top off, all right? And these oranges are pretty yellow now. Wow, it's almost like a lime, yeah. a, a lemon. That's almost lemon. Um, hey, real quick, I'm gonna throw these in the oven at 375. Okay, so, so I've cut off the top there, and I've cut off bottom there, or top or bottom, however you wanna say it. Now I'm gonna set this flat on, this, on, the, uh, flat on the cutting board like so. And I'm going to put my knife right where the orange meets the pith, or the, the inner part of the peel. And we're just going to peel that all around like so. And then when you start your next cut, you can keep your knife. Again, you can see where, in your, where your knife is going right down that line right there. Okay, and we wanna save as much of the orange on there as we can. And if you get to a point like that where you gotta you left some of the pith on there, that's okay. We can come back to it. So we just keep going around the, the orange. And again, working at the Broadmoor Hotel in my apprenticeship, we had to do like three cases of these every other week or so. Now, did you have to go through and do the Supremes? Are you doing the Supremes? Well, not for not this, for this right? application. Yeah. But, um, but for during my apprenticeship, oh yeah, grapefruit, orange, lemon, and lime Supremes. Now, for those of you who don't know what Supremes are, it's where you take that orange that Jason's got right there, and then you take your knife and you slide it down right where the pith is, and, and so that way you're cutting into each segment. And so you cut one side. Like this. Yeah, here we go. So see, you've got this line of pith right here. So you go, you cut down that line, and then down that line, and you have a Supreme. Yeah, so if you so want to get fancy with your fruit salad, there you yep, go. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> All right. So really quick, I'm going to turn you all back towards the stove here. Because we have some really great caramelization going on yeah, over here. Should be right about there, right? Oh, I can see it from yeah. here. So check that out. Oh, man, look at all that caramelization on there. All right. So now I'm going to pour in about two cups of stock here. And finish cooking those. Oh, let me scrape some of that fawn, that great caramelization off of there. Oh, man. Oh, jeez, these are going to be dark. That was going to be so good. All right. Woo! That is hot. Yep. Yep. That steam is Looking there. good. Okay. So there we go. All right, so now for our, and, and for this amount of onions, two cups, you know, when you get your onions cooked down to this, two cups is just above the level of onions here. So, or I'm using one quart, so two cups is half of a quart or two, one, one pint. Yeah, and so if you didn't have enough onions or something and you went with a little bit less, like you said, you just want yeah. to just barely cover, cover it and you'll have the about the right amount. Yep, just about. Now we're gonna turn that heat up. We just, and these onions, because they've, they've, you know, through the caramelization process, they've cooked fairly soft. Um, we don't need to cook it much. So that's the point of putting the stock in is to, you know, number one, you kind of bulk up the product. Number two, it gives the blender something to blend, or it, it, it helps with the blending process, um, hey. but it also helps cook the onions so you don't have raw onions in your sauce and you get a smoother sauce. Yeah, because we're looking right. for a sauce, not a puree. That's exactly right. So, uh, okay, so we're gonna let that come up. I'm gonna switch you all back over to here. Okay, so let me just kind of pop you up here. You see the mixer? Uh, yep, yeah, we see oh, it, we yeah, see the grinder. Yeah. Okay, so um, now with this orange, we just need to cut this into pieces big enough to go into our grinder here. So I'm just going to, going to, uh, going to uh, cut these guys, cut down. guys down. 
There we go. Okay, now we need to get a bowl. We'll put that down right like so. And it's going to get messy. <laughs> All right, here we go. So first we're going to put in our cranberries. It's kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of like math. There's an order of operation here. Yep. Okay. You must be homeschooling so gonna... your kids right now. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly right. Jeez. <laughs> All right. So we want a fairly fast speed. We're just going to feed our cranberries in. Okay. And this takes a little bit with the grinder here. And if you don't have a grinder at home, if you want to make this recipe, you could use a food processor. You could chop it with a knife. Um, you could even use like a little pastry cutter or something like that. Um, I'll show you what that looks like here in just a second. Yeah, kind of whatever you got. Because I don't have a grinder, yeah. so and I'm, I think I'm going to make this recipe next week. So I'm probably going to use my food processor. Yeah, food processor will work. You could run it through a food processor with a shredding attachment. Yeah. Oh, you definitely. Oh, you could definitely shred it. That would. That's. That's a really good idea. I don't know if it'll work for the okay, oranges. But worth a shot. Somewhere in my kitchen, I have the plunger to this. I just don't know where it went. Um, it's like the plunger for a Vitamix. Who actually has those anymore? <laughs> Jimmy comes up with all the great solutions. <laughs> He's awesome. That's a great idea. Look at that. <laughs> there you go. Ooh, ooh. I'm going to take you guys over real quick. Check this out. Oh, uh, yeah. We got some pecan pie. Yeah, so see there. how they puffed up? See, if oh, I man. didn't uh, roll them out, they would have puffed up even more. So, all right. Let's let those go a little bit longer until the... Uh, Puff pastry starts to caramelize a little bit more, get a little more brown. All right. And I'm turning off my uh, onions over here, so now they're just hanging out. All right. Okay, so we've got that in. Now we're going to go with our apples. So I've kind of done the, the tougher stuff first, and we'll do the softer stuff last. So... We'll throw our apple in there. Yeah, and so like okay. by doing the cranberries and stuff, and so like I used to have a juicer. Um, I used yeah. to do a lot of juice. And I would always save like one of the hard ones though, like a carrot or something for the end to kind of push all yep. that soft stuff through. Oh, that's a good idea. I mean, I'll keep... I'll keep one apple segment out and we'll do that. Yeah, even just one because it kind of like that extra fiber and that apple kind of helps push it all out. Yeah. That's okay. So we're pushing all this stuff through. I'll just throw our oranges in there. Oh, and then when you do segments, and then if you brush them with cranberry, you get that oh, cool. yeah. little bit of a tint to it. That looks cool. Okay, so we're grinding all this down. Oh, man. Woo! That's going to be good. Okay, then we'll just do ahead. go ahead and do our pineapple. This is so fresh. I know. Like I said, last year after uh, watching you do this recipe, and then uh, doing it with some of the um, the folks we had at the event, um, it yeah. was so good. I yeah, it's delicious. All the leftovers that we had that we brought home, I ended up eating that for like the rest of the week. <laughs> yeah. All right. So you saw they had kind of squirted out there a little bit. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and shove this one last apple segment through. <laughs> you're scaring Carol with uh, putting your thumb down in the grinder. So good thing you, yeah. good thing you grabbed the plunger. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay, so we have all of our product pushed through now. So now we'll just kind of tilt this a little bit and get all that juice out of there. Okay, and then, oof. 
Okay, we'll wiggle that loose there. Come on. <laughs> yeah, I know. So when you go through all that grinding, it kind of jams itself in there. Yeah. I, I had the okay. same issue with my uh, pasta attachment. <laughs> yeah. These things get stuck in there. So earlier I talked about you can use a pastry. Um, pastry uh, cutter. Pastry cutter. Thank you. So this is what that looks like. So it might be a little challenging smashing all that stuff. Yeah, it may but, be a little bit chunkier, yeah. but well, that's all right. Yeah. Okay, so we went through and we did our zest, right? So we want to put that in there. All right. So now we need to get our sugar out. You know, I was also I was thinking about this recipe the other day too while I was peeling some green chilies. Yeah. I was also thinking it might be kind of delicious to throw some chopped green chilies in there. <laughs> you know what? That's that might be pretty good. Add a little bit of uh, some. Now, are you roasting them, or you think? Yeah, you leave I've them? got some roasted. So I think what I may do is just yeah. take a small side batch and uh, turn try it try it out. I'll let you know how it goes. <laughs> yeah, definitely. All right, so we'll add some some sugar here. Okay, so I'm going to uh, so that's one cup. All right, so I'm going to stir that in. Now we have this beautiful cranberry sauce you can see all the individual fruits in there all right oh man it smells so good i know yeah i remember that distinctly too last year when we were doing this as a class and uh just the yeah. whole room smelled so good yeah it's it's that orange you know that citrus makes things smell so good it's a, it's a big pop a big pop of citrus okay so we're going to go ahead and taste this. Now, I personally think, for me, that's sweet enough. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, if you wanted to add one more cup or a little bit more, you could definitely do that. But, I mean, that's it right there. Nice. So there we go. Nice and chunky. Well, that's, excuse me. It's not chunky, but what I mean by that, like I said, you can see all the individual fruits in there. Uh, the cranberry skins in there, those little dark spots, it adds to the uh, to the um, appearance of the of the relish there. So, man, nice. It's gonna be good in a pierogi in a couple. Of weeks. Hey, yeah. <laughs> all right, we're gonna set that aside. All right, so just so everybody can see while you're doing that, I got all these ready to go. What you got? I think these are ready to come out. Let's grab that. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That's just about perfect. We're going to, as you can see in here, we have a little bit of, still got a little jiggle in the pecan filling. And we have we don't have quite the brown browning that I want on the uh, puff pastry. So we're going to go for a few extra minutes, but you get the general idea. And so if you don't get to see it before we uh, wrap this up, um, I'll be sure to take a picture and uh, a picture of me enjoying it. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I know. And I'm now it's this is one of those nights, Jimmy, where I'm jealous now because <laughs> you have you have those pecan cups over there. Uh, I would love to have one of those. Might have to make those for Thanksgiving. Well, you know, we're okay. doing the uh, food distribution tomorrow. Um, I'll, I'll bring a oh, I'll bring a few oh, over. Yeah. Oh, that would be that would be lovely. Such such a nice person. <laughs> okay, okay. So now, let me kind of show you what this looks like here. So, you know, we've got nice caramelized no. onions there, color, right? We have some liquid in yep. there. Uh, and again, we might have to add a little bit more liquid in there, but it's just kind of a, a cook by feel. That's my favorite way to cook. So I'll take my same spatula here, all right? We'll just dump this right in. You see how dark that liquid is there, I, I hope. Uh, sometimes with this lighting and this time of day. It, yep, no, it looks that, a little funny. that looks like you got a good color on there. It's almost as dark as yeah, my uh, caramel. Like, dude, that is like almost like beef stock, beef demi dark, almost. Okay. All right, so we've got that in there. Okay. So. High speed blender, hot liquid, narrow contraption. What's going to happen? 
What do we always Take say? Slope, Every single time what we do this. Say? That's right. So I'm going to go ahead and get, I'll get a plug in here. So we plug up our lid. We got a nice tight fitting lid here, but now I'm going to take that extra step. I'm going to go ahead and cover this blender with the towel. Okay. And yeah, I mean, I've got the variable speed here. So I'll start on the lowest speed. Um, well, we've got to plug it in first. <laughs> Turn it off. I, I, I turned it off. <laughs> we definitely don't want to. Uh, yeah, don't don't have it on and then uh, go to turn it off or uh, plug it in and have it on. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna turn that on. Start pureeing here. So I'm gonna let that puree, and we're going to mount this with butter, a burr monte. So I'm gonna add. Probably another one, maybe two tablespoons of butter. We'll see. Uh, going back through comments, uh, Carol is asking about the difference between a sauce and a puree. Um, I mean, a puree is going to kind of hold up on a spoon. Uh, you can pick it up and it'll uh, still kind of mound on a spoon, whereas a sauce as you pick up, should kind of stick to the spoon, should, but should flow off of it. All right, we're going to go ahead and check this. Now, as I'm saying that we, we're, we're going to mount some butter in here, I always use unsalted butter for, for everything. I never use salted butter for anything. Um, I think it's, it, it, I like to do the seasoning part, and I think salted butter is too salty. Um, and I believe the way that salted butter is made is that it, Sometimes it can be a little inconsistent on the amount of butter in each yeah. each pound. I, I'm a salted butter kind of guy, though. <laughs> oh, are you? Yeah. No, we, we, we always get the uh, the Kerrygold from Costco because it's such a good price for a four-pack. Um, oh, well, Kerrygold's good. Yeah. Though, man. No, that, that's good and butter. That's, yeah, like, I, like, I do like to control the salt on most things. Um, yeah. But they've got, it, they've got it locked down pretty tight, and it's – Overall, I'm pretty happy with just using that for everything. <laughs> nice, nice. Okay, <clears throat> so you can see how dark it is here. Yeah, it's like a nice, a nice perfect color. gravy texture and yeah. Color. I mean, that's that's almost like the like the color of your gravy. Now, if you wanted to, you could even you could add your turkey gravy straight to this, or add this to your turkey yep. gravy if you wanted to, or you can have two types of gravy in there. So, yeah. All right. So I'm going to turn this back on just kind of at a, a medium speed here. I just want the top to be spinning. I'm going to take this whole nub of butter here. And we're just going to, we're just going to blend that in. Oh, no. So we get all incorporated and we'll add some more butter to it. All right. I'm back. Okay. So that was about two tablespoons of butter. Yeah, and so this butter is definitely giving it a nice, it's going to give it a nice sheen, a nice smooth texture, kind of round it out. Yeah, now, now we need to season it up. Okay. And so okay. for those vegetarians out there too, um, Instead of doing chicken yeah. stock, you could totally do um, roasted veg stock um, or roasted, a roasted yeah. veg base or something um, and make yeah. make a vegetarian gravy. And it's got a, the same consistency, um, similar flavors, but it's got that sweetness from the onion. And uh, yeah, I, I love this sauce. Yeah, this is a pretty good one. Um, all right, so we're going to turn this up now, get that seasoning all in there. Right. Yeah, Jason, we're right at 510. I know we uh, had a little bit of a late start with our technical difficulties. Yeah, we're running just a little bit over, but that's okay. All right. So now, unfortunately, I don't have a I don't have a wonderfully roasted turkey here to to uh, show for this, but I'll just show you kind of the consistency of this here. Um, so again, we've got that nice sheen color to it. We've got a that might be a little thick, but I don't know. That's, I mean, we've got a lot of gravy there, you know? 
There's a lot there. So yeah, now you got it ready for next week. That's it. That's it. Yeah, you know what? This gravy freezes really, really well, even with that whole butter in there. It freezes very nicely. So um, we'll definitely use that for next week. But all right. So real quick on these uh, pecan tarts, if you will. Yeah. Right, everybody can, if you can see how the the pecan filling is puffed up, it's caramelized. <laughs> all that sugar in there started to caramelize, and then that's what's going to firm up. Um, inside of there with the egg yolk or with the eggs. So I am going to go ahead and pull these ones and throw the other ones in. Cool. All right. Not doing too bad. Not doing too bad. Okay. So the flavor on this, you know, we get a, we get a, a, a just a beautiful, clean, caramelized flavor. Um, almost like a perfectly roasted onion. Um, you know, we don't have that harsh, bitter onion flavor either in there. You know, it's it, it's kind of sweet, but there's so much depth with that caramelization in there. You know, we've got, we have depth with the butter that we started the onions with. We have the depth from the uh, from the caramelization of the onions. And of course, then we, we hit it with some, uh, some fresh butter at the end. Um, and so we really have that, that depth going on there as well. Um, and of course, it's, and for, for me, I think it's seasoned perfectly. Um, you know, eating spoonfuls of this stuff <laughs> will put you into heaven. Yeah. No, um, you, you know, that's one thing, you know, compared to if you put it on to, a, you know, a, a piece of meat or something like I'm that. I'm eating so, spoonfuls of uh, another brown sauce. It's just caramel. Yeah, oh, oh, yum, yum, yum. All right. So now we can put it on some of our plate here and. You can kind of see just a nice consistency here of it. And oh, can you move so we don't up have a little separation. Bit. Or to your right. To your right. There it is. Yeah. There. All right. So now we have a nice. And you can, you know, like uh, the restaurant I learned how to cook this, um, we used to put it through a chinois two or three times. Well, maybe once or twice. Um, you know, so it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, it looks a little grainy now. It looks a little, not chunky, but it's not as smooth as um you know as as some people might like it or uh you know that you might find but um it's just a great all-around sauce it's really good for uh, obviously for turkey uh, for beef but really thanksgiving or the holidays is really the only time that i ever make this sauce but um it is a uh, it's definitely a really good sauce um you know and it's one you can have have a conversation with somebody um while, while you're making it like we yeah do. Yeah, we can we can talk with all you out there while we're making these. <laughs> it's not that hard. What's that? Yeah. So, all right, let me put this back here. All right, Jimmy, you got some pecan cups there. You wanna? Oh yeah, I think we are, I already showed them, but uh, I don't know if you saw them. Oh, you did. I'm sorry. But you can see it. So we. we... Sorry, it disappeared there. My hit my power oh, off. That's all right. On Look, they just picked right up out of there. Oh yeah, yep. These are gonna be good. Oh man, look at those. Those look great. And I got these. We'll get those in the oven, but I think we'll wrap up here. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, all right. Well. <clears throat> So today we walked you through how to do a fresh cranberry relish with cranberries, apple, orange, um, some orange zest, um, and uh, some uh, fresh pineapple. Uh, then we did a nice caramelized onion gravy where we went through the process of heating up our pan. Uh, we'll slice the onions first, heating up our pan, um, and then uh, properly caramelizing our onions. Uh, and then we turned that into a nice pureed sauce. Um, Jimmy? What do you got? Yeah, and so we did the, the pecan tarts, and so it's basically just a traditional pecan pie filling, uh, but taking that pecan pie filling and put it in muffin tins with uh, some puff pastry. Um, we didn't get a chance to get to the good. Dolce um, walkthrough, but, you know, maybe uh, I'll find a link to someone that does it, or uh, maybe we'll make a quick little video on that. Um, but, yeah, no, otherwise I think we're all, all done here. Very good, very good. Well, those are just some quick sides that you can incorporate into uh, your Thanksgiving meal. Um, you know, a lot of people have their uh, kind of their differences, or not differences, but um, 
guess their taste on mashed potatoes. Um, you know, so again, that caramelized onion gravy would go really great on some buttery mashed potatoes. Um, uh, but again, you know, Thanksgiving, there's all kinds of different things you can do. Yep. And um, we just felt like these are kind of some unique recipes uh, to throw out there and to teach people how to do and to showcase for you all. So, um, and again, they're fairly easy. Um, so with that, Thank you all very much for watching. Um, maybe, um, so we won't see them next week, or they won't see us next week. We'll so, we'll see. If we do, it'll um, be a surprise show. It'll be a surprise <laughs> show, a little, little, little pop-up. Yeah, we'll, we'll, like we'll see yeah. if I uh, want to hop on like this while I'm doing the, uh, the turkey, and maybe we can do a couple little quick little videos on little tips here and there. Not okay, promising so anything, good. but... Yeah, not promising. We're planning on taking the week off, but we'll see, so... But either that, but with that, we'll see you on December 2nd. So thank you all very much. Please enjoy your holiday. Yep. Be yeah. safe. And stay, stay safe, safe and, and remain stay rowdy. rowdy. <laughs> all right, there we go. We'll get that someday. Yeah. <laughs> we'll all right. All right. See you all. Jimmy, good job, man. We'll see you later. Thanks, y'all.